Transient synovitis Hip joint, as all the joints of the body, has a lubricating lining called the synovial membrane. Transient synovitis is an idiopathic benign inflammatory process affecting the joint synovium. It can affect any major joint but most commonly affects the hip joint. When the synovial membrane is inflamed produces more than its usual thin film of lubricating fluid that results in a joint effusion. And this can cause joint capsule extension and joint tightness results in more pain in the hip. Transient synovitis of the hip is the most common cause of sudden hip pain in children. This condition is called transient because it lasts only a short time. It usually occurs in children between 3 and 10 years of age. It is more common in boys than in girls. In most cases, only one hip is affected, but some children have pain in both hips. We don't know the exact cause of transient synovitis of the hip. It might be caused by a viral infection, such as an upper respiratory infection, or it might be from a reaction to an infection somewhere else in the body. Symptoms Children with transient synovitis generally are well-appearing. The main symptom is hip pain that comes on quickly. It usually improves during the day. Child can walk with a limp later in the day. When the pain gets bad enough, the child may refuse to bear weight on the affected extremity. Some children may have pain of the inner thigh or knee area, instead of around the hip. Many children who have this condition want to lie on their back and abduct and rotate the hip outward. This position may lessen the pain. Some children with transient synovitis have a fever, but it is usually mild. Diagnosis Transient synovitis diagnosis is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning the diagnosis is made once other more dangerous causes of acute hip pain are ruled out. The doctor will ask about the child's symptoms and when it starts. He will perform a physical examination. The child will have exacerbation of pain with internal hip rotation on examination. The doctor must order blood tests, including white blood count, WBC, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR, and C-reactive protein, CRP, to exclude bacterial infection in the hip, which needs to be diagnosed and treated relatively quickly to prevent any damage occurring to the hip joint. In transient synovitis, WBC may be slightly elevated, ESR usually less than 20 mm per hour. CRP less than 20 mg per liter, and it is the most important factor to rule out septic arthritis. CRP greater than 20 mg per liter in combination with refusal to bear weight yields a 75% probability of septic arthritis. Patients with clinical or laboratory findings of concern should undergo hip imaging, typically ultrasonography of both hips. Doctor might order radiograph including x-rays or MRI in order to exclude other causes of hip pain. Diagnostic arthrocentesis may be necessary to definitively exclude septic arthritis. Arthrocentesis means taking fluid from the joint with a needle. Then the laboratory can analyze this fluid to determine if bacteria or lots of white blood cells are present which are seen in patients with a bacterial infection. Treatment Irritable hip is a mild temporary condition that will get better on its own. Complete rest is usually all that is needed. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs, are helpful for irritable hip as they relieve the pain as well as reducing inflammation. Patients treated with ultrasound-directed hip aspiration may recover faster, potentially from reduction in capsular stretch. 
But since most children recover quickly we do not recommend this procedure except where necessary to exclude septic arthritis. It should start to improve in about 3 days and be better within 1 to 2 weeks. The child should be watched to ensure their condition does not worsen. In addition, regular temperature checks are important. Child should be brought to see a doctor right away if he develops a fever or is otherwise unwell. Develops an obvious swelling or redness on any part of the hip or leg. Has increasing or persistent pain that is not relieved by anti-inflammatory drugs. Is in pain when they are at rest. Is not starting to improve within three days or has not recovered fully in two weeks. After the pain leaves, your child can resume his usual activities. Your child should not take part in sporting activity for a couple of weeks after the illness. Prognosis The prognosis usually is excellent, with full recovery to be expected. Recurrence rates approximately 20% have been reported. A small percentage, up to 10%, may go on to develop leg calvae Perth's disease with a vascular necrosis of the femoral head because a joint effusion under pressure can reduce femoral blood flow. To make sure everything is all right, your doctor may want to take another x-ray of your child's hip in about 6 months.